sound mind is having the wisdom of God to know how to operate in every situation so that you can triumph. Well, I'm feeling triumphant just sharing with you right now all of these things. I'm just feeling so triumphant, aren't you? And that's what the Word of God does for us. It reminds us of who we are in Christ Jesus. So quickly, before we close out this segment, because we're going to have to do that here in a few minutes, let's go to Isaiah 54 and look at verse 7. Oh, God is so good to us. If we can just receive it, if we can just get rid of our inhibitions and receive it. Um, uh, well, actually, yeah, Isaiah 54 verse 7 says, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise up against thee in judgment, you shall condemn. You condemn it. You put it down. You put it to death. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. This is your heritage. Don't just let go of it. Don't just leave it laying there dead. Pick it up and operate with it. He's given it to us to overcome with. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Now, skip down here to, to Isaiah 55, and let's look at verse 10 through 13, because, again, these are so close together it must be for a reason, right? Placement in the Word of God is everything. He says here, well, you know, we could even back up a little bit more than that. Look at verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while he can be found. Call ye upon him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake his ways. We're going we're gonna to change, okay? We're going to change our ways to, to God's ways. And the unrighteous man, his thoughts his thoughts and let him return to the lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our god and for he will abundantly pardon there's that pardoning we've got to have it we've got to have our clear pathway between god and ourselves at all times for my thoughts he says are not your thoughts and neither are your ways my ways says the lord as the heavens are higher than the earth God's thoughts towards us are so high. Higher than what we would think for ourselves ever, right? For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts and your thoughts. As the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and returns not thither, but it waters the earth and it makes it bring forth and bud, that it can give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Remember we talked about seed, uh, seed time and harvest last time? So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It will not return void, <clears throat> but it shall accomplish that which I please and prosper in the thing whereto I send it. If we do what we read here, if we change our thoughts, <laughs> if we accept God thoughts, and put away those wicked, twisted thoughts that we used to have. And, and go God's way. Then his word will prosper in what it was sent to prosper him. And now listen how you're going to... Listen to the effect. Listen to what it's going to accomplish in you and I. You and me. Verse 12. For you shall go out with joy... You're going to be filled with joy when you get into this position where you are living freely in all that God has called and ordained you to live in, in that divine order of things of his. You're going to go out with joy. You're going to be led forth with peace. Mountains and hills are going to break forth before you into singing and all the trees of the fields are going to clap their hands and don't think for a second that in the spiritual realm that's not a reality because it is i've seen it the lord blessed me to be able to see that 
it's a truth. He's not, he's not just throwing out words here. God doesn't just throw out idle words. As a matter of fact, he says, we're going to be accountable for every idle word we speak. Instead of the thorn, verse 13, Isaiah 55, instead of the thorn is going to come up the fir tree. And instead of the briar is going to come up the myrtle tree. And it will be to the Lord for a name and for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Now, when you hear that, the thorn, uh, instead of the thorn is going to come up a fir tree. Instead of the briar. Do you know where those words originate? Do you? Do you know where they originate? You remember when Adam and Eve fell, right? Yeah, I know you do. I know you do. And verse 4, God said unto the serpent, well, let, let's not read that part. We're going to get, uh, I need to find the exact verse. Okay, and Adam, to Adam, he said, because... You hearkened unto the voice of your wife instead of God, <clears throat> and you have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and in sorrow shall you eat of it all your life. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. Thorns and thistles it's going to bear in your life. And here we read in Isaiah 55, no longer, no more, no more the curse, no more the thorns and the thistles. Mm -mm. That's not what God has ordained for us any more than he had ordained it for Adam and Eve in the very beginning before they chose to think their own thoughts, to listen to the voice of the enemy, and to literally choose a path of thinking and doing that was opposite of God. So, I'm still excited. I still am feeling triumphant. And you can have that. God wants you to have that. God wants you. Next time we come back, we're going to... And, so segment three, we're going to begin to discuss the confidence that God wants to build up in your life. He calls us to walk confidently in him, to walk confidently in ourselves in that. He creates of us this new being that has no fear and that can go forth and and accomplish mighty exploits in his name because we do not operate in fear. We're operating after the power, the anointing, the supernatural ability of God in us. I want to pray for you just real quick before we leave off in this segment. God, I thank you for your word that is so rich. I thank you, Father God, that it has the power to destroy the, the, the yokes of the enemy off of people's lives. I thank you, Father God, that you have an abundant entrance. We'll read that maybe next time. Into your kingdom. You have it set, ordained. It's already there. We just need to know that it's there so that we can enter into it. And I pray for my brothers and sisters in Christ today that have not yet entered into that abundant entrance Father, that by your spirit you would reveal that into their spirits today, Lord God, that you would quicken them in that very place. And Father God, that a new entrance would be realized in their lives with you. That they can benefit from all of these things that we've been sharing by your spirit today, after the leading of your spirit. Lord, I pray for any who have never asked Jesus into their lives to be their righteousness before you to set them free to cause them to become a son and daughter of the most high god lord i pray for those who would reach out in faith and invite you in today father he i know you hear their prayer and you will answer 
And Lord God, you said that the angels rejoice over even one soul that enters into the kingdom of God. I pray for them today, Father, that your incorruptible seed would be sown into their lives, Lord God, and it would begin immediately, it will begin immediately to manifest itself in their lives. They'll know the change has been made. They won't understand it, maybe. They may have no word background, but call on God, call on the Holy Spirit who saved you, Jesus saved you. Call on the Trinity and, and invite God to come in and begin the new work in you to create you in Christ Jesus. I love you. And we'll be back for segment three. This is Ginger Rankin with Izzy Harriet and Company. Thank you for joining me. Bye-bye now.